to the last message in this series. I hope it has been a blessing to you as it has been to myself um, to be encouraged and challenged on where is my faith at? What is my faith in? So this morning we'll be in Hebrews chapter 11, starting with verse 32. Hebrews chapter 11, starting with verse 32. Uh, New creation, uh, I'm going to get on a soapbox here because Christianity in the USA has been infected with this idea of prosperity and winning. We have been led to believe that only God is only with you when you win. God is only with you when you're successful. God is only with you when you do something and you're able, you're blessed to, to receive something. We, we've been infected with this idea, this mindset that only God, God can only bless us. And, 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 and that everything that is a blessing comes from God. We don't realize that the devil can, according to what we consider blessings, bless us as well. And, and, and this idea that, that only God is on the winning side is far from the truth. You got two teams, two teams about to play a game, and, and they, both teams pray to God and ask to win the game. And, 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 and when they play... Only one team can win. So the question has always been asked, whose side is God on? Whose side is God on? And, 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 and if we're truthful about it, we think, just like Romani said, that God is only on the winning team side. And, and, but this morning, I, I, the message here is portraits of faith, winning and losing. We're going to look at both winning and losing and, 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 and look at it from the Hebrew perspective. Remember, we've been talking about Hebrews, and Hebrews was written to um, Israelites, uh, uh, people who would have been very familiar with the history of Israel. They would have known these stories. They would have known these uh, people that were being referenced in the Hall of Faith. They would have known uh, Enoch and Moses, Abraham, Noah. They would have known about uh, uh, Cain and Abel. They, they would have known about all of these people. And, and so when, when the writer is writing, he's trying to encourage the people that, that don't give up. Don't give in. See, God had blessed those people in the past. They had a distributed faith. They had demonstrated faith, in, and they had walked in faith, in, and God blessed them and took care of them and watched over them for different reasons, and God was able to use them because they exercised faith, and they, 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 were, they hung in there. And so he's, the, he's talking to the Hebrew people, but no matter what the problem you have, God is better. Jesus is better. He is the better solution, so hang on in there. And, and, and so today we look at verse 32 of chapter 11. It says, and what more shall I say? He, he's already told us about Moses and Jacob and Abraham and, 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 and Cain and Enoch and all of these people. He says, so what more can I say? I don't have the time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Je Jephthah, and David and Samuel. And the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle, and routed foreign armies. Look, look. In, in the first three, two verses, he, I, this man, this writer has to be a preacher, Sam, because he was like, I, I don't have enough time to tell you about all the other things. It's, it's almost like the end of a sermon. I want to go further. I want to go more. But he says, I don't have enough time. 
I don't have, he says, what more shall I say? He says, I don't have time to tell you about Gideon, but, but, but as, as the young people say, I got time today, Pastor Ma. Let's talk about Gideon for a second. Let's talk about Gideon. Gideon, Gideon, if you want to go back and read about Gideon, Gideon can be found in Judges chapter 6 through 8. And Gideon, um, he, he, he says that Gideon went from 30,000 men and God said, that is too many men to go fight the uh, Midianites. And God said, I want you to cut them down. And he gives them these things. And, and God cuts it down from 30,000 to, to 300 men. And he said, now I can use you. And, 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 and then the, in, in Judges, they describe the Midianite army as locusts around. I mean, it was just so many of them. Over 120,000 at least. And, 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 and Gideon wasn't sure about if God was calling him. And we all know God, uh, uh, some of us are familiar with how God, uh, Gideon asked God, hey, if, if you with me, make this fleece wet, but the ground dry. And, and he did that. And he's like, God, God, don't get mad at me. If, if, I want you to do one more thing. If, if you with me, Make, make the grass wet and the fleece dry this time. And, and God kept meeting Gideon where he was at. And he kept using Gideon. And I want to read one verse for you. One verse. He Judges chapter 6. They're going to get mad at me because I didn't tell her this one. Judges chapter 6, uh, verse 14. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. It says, it says in verse 14, the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of the Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? And that's what Gideon started to ask for more examples. He, he told him to go in the strength you have. And that, if, if that's not a message to somebody right now, God's not asking you, we talked about this in Sunday school, God's not asking you to do more than what he's already at, giving you the ability to do. He wants us to go in the strength we have. And, and, and Gideon, he's, it, Gideon was able to show faith because eventually Gideon went out with 300 men. And, and, and God said, you know what, Gideon, if you still have any questions, I want you to go down to the, to the camp. I want you to go stand outside the camp. And I want you to listen to what they're saying. And, and he overheard a conversation about a guy who had a dream that uh, they were about to be conquered. And the other guy that he was talking to said, that got to be about Gideon and his army coming to, to overcome us or to take over us. And Gideon got the courage he needed to go out and fight the Midianites and conquer over 120,000 men with just 300. Odds were stacked against them, but Gideon exercised faith to keep going forward. But we, we're not just going to stop at Gideon. Uh, uh, let's look at Barak. Barak is found in Judges 4 and 5. And, and, and Barak was used when Deborah was the judge Barak was the commander of the army, and God used him to have victory over Jabin, the king of Canaan, and Sisera, the commander of the army. And, and God used Barak in a mighty way to overcome those armies. And, and not only Barak, Jephthah, uh, he was, he, he, this, this, this guy was interesting. He, he's in, um, Judges 11 and 12, he, he was a, a, a bastard son of a prostitute. Uh, and and, and, and they, they were like, you can't stay around here because you don't belong here. And so they got rid of him, but then went to him and said, you know what? You know, could you come and lead our army? And he says, if I'm a leader, can I become um, over everybody? Can I be the ruler over everybody? And they say, yes. And so he goes out and defeats the Ammonites. Through the power of God. And, 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 and 
And, and so the Hebrew writer is reminding all of these people about these names. See, they would have known this history. All these men were able to win and do great things for God. But not only that, Samson. Look, look what else. Look who, who else they talked about. Samuel and David. Uh, that we know about the, the armies that David killed. We know about how great a man David was. We know how great a prophet Samuel was. And, and we have all of these things. And he's saying that, that God was with these men. That, look what else he says. Not only them, but through the prophets, verse 33 says, who through faith conquered kingdoms and ministered justice and gained what was promised. Who shut the mouths of lions? I don't know about you. That kind of sounds like Daniel, but, but it could have been other people too. But that, that sounds to me like Daniel and the lions then. Who shut the mouths of, of lions? Verse 34, quench the fury of the flames. That, that, I don't know. That, that could be a couple of other people, but I got a feeling that might be re referring to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, um, so so we, we, we kind of know some of this history. Um, but it says, whose weakness, quench the fury of flames and escape the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Oh, oh, it sounds like to me, Pastor Miles, Pastor uh, Mac, that, that, that God is for the winning. He, he, he's for winning for people who get routed and, and, and to be able to overcome all these great things. God has to be for the winning. Look what, but look what else it says, verse 35. It says, Roman received back their dead, raised to life again. Oh, ain't that something? God was allowing people, and there, there's, there's stories in the Bible about women. It, it may be referring to Elijah and Elisha when um, they were in the marketplace and they raised a, a young boy back to life. It, it could be referring. We don't know exactly what the reference is, but uh, the, the bigger picture is God has blessed these women to receive back their dead. Raised to life. But look at the other side of the sentence. The B part of this, it says, there were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Verse 36 says, some face jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered the deserts and the mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These, that the, there were some that, that were victorious, but then there was others who, who, let's just walk through it. They were tortured were for refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Um, um, there were some that were face jeers and flogging. And you know what flogging is? Flogging is when they take a cat of nine tails and they whip you around your back and tear the flesh open on your back. Uh, a lot similar to what they did to the slaves back in the day with the whip. They, they would flog you. They would open up your back. And, uh, but not only that, look what else it says. He says, verse 37, they were put to death by stoning. The tradition says that that uh, uh, this isn't in the Bible, but, but tradition, Jew, Jewish tradition is that Jeremiah was stoned to death. Uh, um, the prophet Jeremiah was stoned to death. Look what else it says. It says, um, some, they were sawed in two. Again, Jewish tradition has it that Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, who wrote the book of Isaiah, was sawed in two. Uh, uh, Let's keep going. It, it, it says th they were killed by the sword. Uh, we, we see that in, in, in 1 Kings 19.10. It says, he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, 
torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. See, see, we want to, we, 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 we only want to talk about the good things of Christianity. We don't want, we want to talk about the, the positive things and, and winning of, of Christianity, but we don't ever want to bring up the bad things that these prophets went through. See, see, the prophets wasn't welcome like, like we want to, you know, welcome prophets today. The, these prophets, these people that claim these titles are prophet and they have an armor bearer, you got, and they got security, you can't even get close to them. That, that, the back then wasn't welcome in some towns. They didn't want to see a prophet coming. Some people, they would put the prophet to death. And, 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 and we see that and it says the world, verse 38, was not worthy of them. And you know what's true about the world? The world doesn't like righteousness. The world doesn't like to be told the truth. If you don't believe me, go be share biblical beliefs with people who, who don't believe like you do and find the hostility that comes when we share biblical truths with them. See, the world is not worthy of them and the world is not worthy of us. It says they wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and holes in the ground. These, these men were, didn't have... Uh, 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 the big house and didn't have the the nice car. They they weren't driving and 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 having the the best car in the parking lot and everybody else driving a uh, uh, beat up cars. They 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 didn't live that way. These men were were faithful to God and did what God said and God was with them. How do I know that? Verse thirty nine tells us it says they were all. All, every last one of them, were commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. So let me ask you a question, New Creation. If, if, if we don't ever receive blessings from God, are we going to stay faithful? If, if, if we don't ever see God move in a great way in our lives, Will we stay faithful? Because here, this is what the Hebrew writer is trying to encourage the Hebrew people. This says, no matter what comes your way, stay with God. Why? Verse 40, look what it says. Since God had planned something better for us, and so that the only together with us would they be made perfect. Oh, I, I, I want you to see this, and I want you to hear it. It says, since God had planned something better for us. God has something better in store for each and every one of us. Some of us might see that on this side of the earth. Some of us may not. Some of us may get blessed on this side of the earth. Some of us may not. But God, for all of us, has something better. Better. And that's what he's trying to, the Hebrew writer is trying to encourage them. And that's what God is trying to encourage us. No matter what it is that comes your way, hold on, because God has something better for us. I love what Sister, Sister Vivian blessed me this morning. She's, when, when she told me about her granddaughter leaving, she's like, she's in a better place. And that's sometimes we need to be reminded that this world is not our home. We have a better place made for us up there. Wherever it is, it, we don't know the location, but I can tell you where it is. It's with God. It's with Jesus Christ. And, and, and I love, Hezekiah Walker has this gospel song out. It says better. It, it's, it's simply called better. It says it's going to get better. Better. It's going to get better. Why? Because God is in control. And I think we need to be reminded of that. But look what else it says. Look at the second part, the B part. He says something better for us so that only together, only together with us would they be made perfect. I, I struggle with this part of the thing. And then I got reminded, Brother Sam, I, I, I'm thankful to God for my parents who raised me in church because I learned some hymns back in the day that just stayed with me. And I, I didn't really understand the meaning of them. And, and, and there was this one when I was reading this came to my mind and it just clicked for me. And, and the, the hymn goes, when we all 
get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory. Oh, y'all know it. That's, that, 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 that's what this verse is talking about. It's saying when we all get to heaven, uh, we all are going to be able to sing and shout the victory. We got the victory. And I'll just stop by to encourage you just like the Hebrew writer was encouraging them. I don't know what it is you're going through. I don't know what's coming your way. I don't know how your classroom is going to turn out, Sister Vivian. I don't know how surgery is going to work for some of us. Uh, your cancer diagnosis, but it's going to get better because God is in control. It's going to get better. And we're going to be able to sing and shout the victory because when we all get to heaven, See, see, the, the uh, saints of old are up there waiting. And the saints of new, that's us. They, 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 they're, they're waiting because there's going to come a day when we all going to get together. See, see, they're waiting on us to come on up because they're already with him in his presence. But there's going to come a day when we all get to be together. And when we all get to see our loved ones that have passed on before us. And we're going to get to see our children, hopefully, that express faith after we have gone on to be with the Lord. And we're going to all get to sing and shout the victory. New creation, we got the victory. We got the victory. And I just want to encourage you as you leave this church this morning, don't walk with your head down. I don't know what it is that may be hurting you. Or I don't know what it is that may, you may be going through. I don't know what may be discouraging you this morning, but you have the victory. We got the victory. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the victory. Thank you for having something better for us. And sometimes we got to forget about our current situation and look forward to that day when you come back. And that sky cracks open and we all get together. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that's going to be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Oh, new creation. And, and, and I pray that we all remember the victory. Lord, give us the, use the Holy Spirit to remind us of that fact that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, and that one day we're going to have the complete and ultimate victory. We will be made perfect. Everything will be complete, and we will be able to sing and shout the victory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for all that you are going to do for us. Thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow. But, Lord, whether we're winning or whether we're losing, according to the world, we're losing. We're, we're not doing well. We're being flawed, discouraged. Well, whatever it is, encourage our hearts. Help us to be reminded that we have something better. And let us continue to share that with this world, this dark and dreary world. Let us be a vessel to be used by you to, be, to share that we have something better. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We are.